Uh, welcome to episode two of Lockdown with the Ackies. This time I'm joined by Chloe Muir, Dion Brown, Josie Giard, and assistant coach Bobby Watson. Uh, how are you? How are you all doing? Uh, obviously, with the, the New Year's, stuff, is all the good New Year's stuff? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, it's been all right. Cool. So it's been 32 days since that torrential day in Stirling, where obviously we managed to, to get the win. So I'd, I'd imagine you would be doing anything to kind of play in the same conditions just now, obviously with the recent news that's come out. I think we're actually still thawing out for that game, to be truth and honest with you. <laughs> I, think I, was, I think I was more concerned about I lost my gloves, to be honest, <laughs> than actually the weather. You still got on with your gloves? <laughs> Alright, I got them back, but it's fine. That's good, that's good. Well, obviously, the, the last couple of days, the SPFL and all that have announced that there's a three-week shutdown of football for below the championship, so obviously that affects you, so therefore there won't be a game until the, the 31st of January against St. Johnson, so see if you look at it, right? we've only, there's only been one game in the SWPL that's been called off due to COVID, so you think we've kind of been a bit, you think of the kick in the teeth for us? You know, for me, I think that it's really difficult this time with the new, with how quickly the, the, the variant's spreading. What my frustration is, is I think that women's football's looked after itself pretty well and I understand that some players will have concerns. This, you know, me talking, you know, play, some players and coaches will have concerns, but generally everywhere we've been, it's been pretty well looked after. It's been clear what we need to do. By and large, our protocols of training have been really good, and that we've had very had a couple of people isolate, but no one is is thankfully actually contracted COVID within the uh, within the women's club at Aki. So that's probably my frustration as we just we're looking forward to getting started, and you know, it, just the announcement didn't come in line with Nicholas Sturgeon Sturgeon's announcement, and we waited another week before anything. Now that's my frustration with it. I don't know about the guys. I think they've obviously. We're fortunate enough to keep training when the other leagues weren't able to. Do you know what I mean? Um, like Bobby said, we have we've been on every protocol. Bobby's been extra vigilant when it came to that. Um, three wee games and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, definitely, it's it's a bit of a kick with teeth. Obviously, when we're just about to start the the league Sunday coming, it's a bit of a, a setback for us. But hopefully, it doesn't go on too long and we can come back again, starting strong. Yeah, I was reading that interview yesterday, actually, with Gary, where he was talking about the suspension and how it could negative, negatively impact people's mental health. Um, obviously, that's such an important issue within the world just now. And um, it's Playing football isn't about money for you guys. I mean, it's about being part of a squad and trying to achieve stuff together. So, um, what's your kind of just thoughts on that? It's, it's not about the money, it's just about playing a game and enjoying the social life with the girls and trying to win stuff together. Yeah, I don't think it's all about the money, to be honest. Like... Um, I think it's an escape for most people. So, like, if people are having mental problems and things like that as well, like they come to training to get away from all that, or like home and things like that. So, I don't really think money is a big uh, problem within the women's um, like social area and things like that. So, I think people come to training things like that will actually help um, the mental space and things like that, and actually get interacting with other people. Because, like, during lockdown, if like if they live on their own, it's quite hard for them to like talk to other people and things like that, but if they can't be training, I think it's more beneficial to them as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, especially when we're still allowed to train, like it helped me a lot to actually get a structure to my week, because I knew like there were certain things that were going to happen. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, wouldn't be just sitting at the house the whole time. Exactly. Definitely does, even like, from the start, it's never been money, I don't think, for us, for us girls. We always, we, we turn up with training through the week, we turn up a game, it's... We're there for the passion of the game. It's not. It's not about the money. That's why it's a quite a big impact for us. Do you know what I mean? But even for me myself, it's right that three three training sessions a week is like right. Let's get out of the house, even for a wee hour. As much as the house is a bit mad, it is good to get out there and just kick about the park. Once you're on there, it's that's all you're thinking about. Just thinking about football and that's it. But it, it does take your mindset off everything else which is happening on in life. Everybody's got their own individual, not say battles, but everybody's got their own life going on and. Football day does give you that wee step back to um, away for it. So, yeah, here's hoping we, that the next few weeks goes on a bit quicker because I know it is, can be a struggle for a lot of people. We know there is some in the team and I know there is people in different teams who are struggling also mentally. And like I say, it is, it is a massive impact uh, mentally when it comes to football. So, 
Pierce home. Forget about definitely, you. definitely. So, kind of moving on, we'll just have a wee quick look through all your careers. Um, we'll start off with you, Coy. So, you've made 31 appearances for Hamilton, scored 14 goals, which included five goals in one game against Clyde in 2019. I said, that's not really, that's not bad for a winger, is it? No, it's actually not that bad for a winger, to be honest, um, concerning the conditions. It was like, I think it was like 29 degrees, um, which was very warm. I think in the first half, I think I was actually dying with the heat. Um, at half time, I thought, like, I, couldn't, I couldn't move. Um, but to get the five goals in 45 minutes, I thought it was actually quite, quite good as well, um, under the circumstances as well. Yep. So you've played with the likes of Rangers in Glasgow City before, joining Aki's in 2018. Uh, what was it like just kind of playing for argu- arguably the two biggest clubs in Scotland? So coming at the Aki's, like that was it, the the like proper time I was actually in a first team with the City and Rangers. It was like just basically the development team. Um, so it's completely different scenarios. Like it was good playing with City and Rangers, all the like, experiences from like the first team things that are coming down, and, like giving us a talk and things like that as well, um, and showing us how sometimes what, how to be like in the first team area. Um, but it was quite good going into City, playing with them for about three year, and then coming to Rangers and playing with them for about two. Um, so it was good in that um, conditions and things like that, and obviously sometimes training with the first team, which was quite good. But coming to Aki's, it's a different environment, such as like coming from the 23s uh, and the under 17s and things like that to come into a first team. Uh, it was like the first time I came into Aki's, I was like, this is so fast, like I'm not used to this compared to like the under 23s. It was like, it was like one touch, two touch, three touch, and you can just pass it. But as for the first team, it's like one touch pass, one touch, two touch pass. So it was like, it's completely different. Um, from Rangers and uh, City coming back to Aki to the first team. Yeah, well, but, I was just going to I was just going to say City have obviously done incredible things for it. women's football in Scotland. Obviously, the the women's Champions League quarter final. But then you've got the likes of Rangers this season that they've kind of made move full time, and I'm pretty sure they've they've pinched a couple of Glasgow City players as well. So how do you kind of see the top flight kind of panning out this season? It's going to be a lot closer than recent seasons. Yeah, so I think last season you. Were maybe kind of predict like who was going to maybe win that league like either Hibs or City but this year it's like completely all over the shot you don't know who's going to win so like Rangers uh, beat City and then City can beat Celtic and then City uh, Celtic sorry beat Rangers so like we don't really know who's actually going to like win it this year as for last year it was quite maybe a bit predictable saying oh it could be Hibs or City uh, but this year I think there's more of a challenge because obviously Celtic and uh, Rangers I like training more um, times, like say just like run about five times a week and things like that, as for City as well. So it is um, probably difficult this season for every other team in that league and it's quite un- uh, unpredictable as well who's actually going to win it this year. Yep, so you were nominated for the Player of the Month in December 2020. I'm pretty sure the poll's actually still running. Um, you're, up, you're up against the likes of the, uh, the SWPL2 top goal scorer, I'm pretty sure, and the likes of people from Rangers and Celtic, so that must be an excellent achievement for yourself. Yeah, it was. It was actually quite unexpected, to be honest. Like, I didn't, I didn't think I would actually be up for it, but um, to be up against three good players, um, such as from Aberdeen, Celtic and Rangers, it's quite a, it's a big achievement for me, and I'm quite pleased that I've actually been nominated for that uh, award and things like that. Right. Uh, it's, it's great when we see players, we've had a few nominated, and Amy Anderson won it. Uh, won the player of the month last season at some point. I think it was the last month of 20, which would have been the 2019 season. Uh, it's coaches, so it's the home coach and the away coaches put the nominations in for their player of the match. So that's where the nominations come from. So, you know, we know it's, you know, Chloe's obviously impressed. It's not just a case of us, it's a case of us impressed the two other coaches to, to get nominated. And, yeah, for any Aki's player that gets nominated for that award, it's a big deal. It's uh, they've they've done well and impressed in the games and very well deserved. Definitely. <laughs> um, moving on to on to you, Dion. Um, you've it's fair to say that you've had your, your fair share of clubs with playing the likes of Mallow, East Kilbride, Milton Rovers, Clement, and Celtic and obviously Aki's. Um, would you say that you're the most eligible you've ever been at a football club playing with Aki's? Yeah, probably. It's not. I'm not going to say the most settled I've been. Been in a team, but like you say, I've been in <laughs> various different clubs. I've uh, been coached by Bobby before, obviously, at East Kilbride many moons ago. I'm not saying many moons ago, but probably a while ago. A while ago. <laughs> a while ago. I think we're talking about what, 10 years, I think, is it, Bobby? I think it's more than that, do you? <laughs> oh, well, do you know what? We'll just call it 10, right? <laughs> we'll just call it 10. But yeah, no, um, I think probably throughout my career. I did, before I came to Yankees, I think I came trained. 
uh, under Gary, uh, what, maybe about four years ago, but I was only there for about maybe three weeks, I think it was, Bobby, I think you were there at the time also. Uh, and I think when I went there at that time, it was like, like Chloe said, the, the speed, everything was just, it was like, right, this is, I'm, I'm not ready for this at that moment in time. So I think after that, I, mean, I was, went to Motherwell, had that break, um, stayed at Motherwell, sorry, and then I went to Celtic and then I finished up at Celtic Academy, obviously had the wee man, um, and then as soon as I had the wee man, I was like, right, I, ha I have to get back into football, because if I don't do it just now, I'll never do it again, do you know what I mean? So got back in probably about three and a half months after having the wee man, and that was it. I think we started in pre-season, did we, Bobby? I think I did start it back in at pre-season. Um, I know pre no, you came in. You came in mid season. Mid season. Uh, mid season. You played the kind of second half of the season because you remember you picked up two co two concussions in the space of three oh, months. I, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, maybe it was because I wasn't actually owned it. Just felt like a, a, a long, long pre season. But yeah, I no. Um, I think when they come back, we were doing a lot of fitness at the time, and it was the best time to come back to get the mobility back up and, and going again. So. Yeah, honestly, I'm f it's probably the most settled I've been in my football career. I was just going to ask what it was like to come back. Obviously, from pregnancy into football, was it was it quite tough? Or was um, it, was it I'm not going to say it was easy, but it, <laughs> it was, like I say, because I come back and because obviously at Aki's we trained quite a lot, it was quite high intensity. So it was it was just getting the fitness back. I think when I, when I found, found out I was pregnant, I was actually three, three months pregnant when I was playing with Celtic and I didn't even realise. Still Obviously, playing five-a-sides on a Monday night. <laughs> no, I was. I was playing, playing five-a-sides on a Monday night and, and training so many times a week. And I was like, oh, God, what's, it, was, it was a major, major shock. Well, not a bad shock. It was a good shock. But I stopped I stopped then. But I think at that moment, I was like, right, I, I, I still kept quite fit all the way through having the wee man. So I was doing like walks every day and, and stuff like that. So I, I knew after I was going to have him, I'd be like, right, I'm going to get back. And the quicker I get back, hopefully I'll still have the ability and get the fitness back. So... I think I managed to get it back quite quick, but it was it was it was good coming back into Aki's because it was like the the intensity was great. It was really good. It was, it was getting up to speed a lot quicker than I thought I was put it that way. Right. So you played thirty eight games for Aki. You scored twenty goals, and you were the the league's top goal scorer last season. Obviously, it must be gotten to miss out Natalie on the promotion. But I mean, top goal scorer. You can't ask for much more than that on a personal level, can you? No, no. I was I was I didn't even. No, I actually had it until I got the email for the, SF, the SWFA saying, oh, by the way, you're up for an award. It was a bit of a shock. I was like, all right, that's quite good. We extra night out of the house. <laughs> but no, um, yeah, happy with it um, as regards to, to last season, obviously. It was it was, it was was such a major gutter, just missing out literally with a point uh, last season. But here's hoping next season it's... This season, sorry, I don't even know. I'm saying this season. I'm hoping it's this season, and it's staying in this year. But yeah, happy with it. Just hopefully get a bit more this year. Right. So I believe your day job is doing pro freelance photography, um, and you get yeah. to go to like work with football legends and stuff like that. That must be absolutely sick, man. Ah, yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's it's really really good. I, had, I actually had a call a couple of days ago. I can't say much about it because it's it's random, but um. It's to do with a, a, another number nine who wears a blue shirt, but that's all I can say about it. But yeah, it's great to work with. I work with like uh, five stars like Arthur Newman and Chris Boyd and different players like that. But it's just good. It's good to just go and do like the big events. I think the last event before all this shut down was actually the the big five star event with Walter Smith and that. And see even just just being there and listening to the stories is is, is brilliant. It is good. I wouldn't even say it was a job. It's made like a hobby for me, to be truthfully honest with you. Um, but I'm just grateful, grateful to have it here. Yeah. Right. So moving on to you, Josie. Um, you're kind of one of the newest additions to the squad, just joining at the, the back end of November. Um, what was it that kind of made you want to move to Hamilton? Um, I just wanted to try something new. Um, I wasn't happy at Celtic anymore. And I kind of just wanted to start over. And I felt like, um, Aki's just had the best environment for that because even though it's it might be a league below um, Celtic, they're still a really ambitious team and, and they have a good setup. Right, so you made your debut for Aki's in a comprehensive 8 0 win against Stirling where you managed to score a wonderful hat trick. It's that's not that you couldn't ask for a better start, really, could you? 
No, I, I was really happy about that. That's my game. <laughs> <laughs> you started your football career in Germany with, is it FSV Guterslaw? Is that right? Yeah, Guterslaw. Uh, you scored 33 goals for them in 87 games. Um, what was it like playing in Germany? Because obviously they put a lot of money, I'm sure, into their women's game and they've got some fantastic teams over there as well. Um, actually, the team I played for, we didn't have a lot of money because um, we were like we only had women's teams. So we weren't part of, of a bigger club. We were just our own small club. Um, but luckily, we had like a local sponsor um, who provided us with really good f- facilities. So even though like we didn't ha- really have that much money. We still had a really good setup, and um, yeah, basically just played for this one team um, my whole time in Germany. But I really enjoyed it, and um, so I played second division, and it was just really, really competitive, cause like it was basically impossible to predict who's gonna end up like who's gonna get promoted, who's gonna get relegated. Um, and it's also a lot of fun because obviously Germany is quite big. So for away games, you get to travel a lot. And even for some games, you like we would travel on a, on a Saturday, like so the day before and stay overnight. So it actually gives you lots of chance to, to get to know your team a lot better. Right. So as I said previously, you played, you played for Celtic before John Nackies. And I'm pretty sure you scored your first goal for Celtic against Nackies. Yeah. <laughs> Just like obviously, just summarize your, your your kind of time at Celtic and what was it like? Was it a lot of pressure playing for like a, a full time club? Obviously, they weren't full time then, but they, they wouldn't have been far off of it. Mm, I never really felt the pressure because I think if you don't grow up in Scotland, you're not really used to the whole old firm thing. Like, it's not that big of an issue for you. So, like, I knew um, Celtic is a big club, but I never felt like just because I'm in Celtic now like everything has changed so I kind of just took it the same way just tried to play my way and just give it the best and I think um, I actually could develop a lot and like I actually had like three or four different coaches in two years at Celtic but I feel like like the longer I played there the better I got so actually I really enjoyed it. Yeah, just lastly, um, I believe you're doing a PhD at Harriet Watt University. Um, how are you finding that? Are you working obviously from home in the Zoom calls and stuff like that? And how are you kind of finding all that? Yeah, so at the moment I'm still working from home because, like, so at the start it's like a lot of lit- literature research and stuff like that. So I can just do that from everywhere. But I'm hoping that hopefully next month I can go actually go in into the lab and do some experiments and stuff. Um, so far it's okay like doing both like football and and the phd um and also my supervisor like when when they offered me the position they said they want me to keep playing football so it's nice to know that that i have their backing that that they understand that football is important to me right so just to kind of finish off i've got like eight or nine quick fire questions that we can go through and um, we'll just obviously start from the baby just went there with Koi to to Josie. Um, so what's the what's the best goal you've ever scored? Um, best, I think the one probably against St Johnston um, when we won 5-0 I think. Um, just when it was the, the way we played uh, through to Tegan, Tegan like, just cutting it back and playing it through. It was an angle like you probably can't see it from the video but from my point of view it literally just curled. I've never curled a ball like that in my life into the back of the net so I thought that was actually pretty decent for me to be honest. <laughs> What about, what about you, Dion? Um, Bobby was telling me that you once ran Kilmarnock Ragged. Like on the old Kilmar. Aye. Yeah, I know. That was a great game. That's probably one of my, up there with my, my favourite games, to be honest. I think it was just the whole, just the whole atmosphere and stuff like that. At that time, the fan base and that were still there. Um, like the mums and dads and stuff like that. But yeah, it was. I think it was started. It was Kilmarnock up one nothing. Aye, uh, they we. This was the game Nick, the last the West. Uh, the game, Nick scored the cracker, but it was. Aye, uh, uh, it was busy. Like a lot of folk were in, and they they were good. So, like Kilmarnock, were, they they had a good yeah. side, and uh, mm-hmm. it was a sort of back and forward game. But mine think. You scored that volley off the throw in, and then Chloe scored right on half time. We went in two yeah. one up, and then right. the one you smashed in the top corner. That's a great goal. Yeah, yeah. 
Aye, that and the, did, did that finish four two, four four three. Four, four two, we won. Four, four two, it finished aye, and then I think it was like you say, it was um, Nick that scored that screamer at the, the four for the fourth goal, four three. But that was that, just everything about that game was, was good. It was great. It was some atmosphere. Even Steely's photographs after it, it's just, it just brings back all the memories of the game. You know what I mean? But yeah, probably go, probably go for that one. <laughs> one of right. these two. Right. What about you, Josie? Obviously, you've 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 scored five goals for Aki's in three games. Um, what what was your best? Obviously, the Hatfield must is an obvious contender, isn't it? Um. Well, out of these five goals, I'll probably say the third one in the first game against Sterling. Yeah, that was a good lob. Like, I can remember that. Yeah. But I kind of took it on the half volley. I don't even know exactly. <laughs> 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 oh, no, that was a screamer. <laughs> yeah. No, that was a good one. What about your your proudest moment in football? Um, I think when I played under seventeens in Germany, we reached the basically the final for the German Championship. Um, we lost out to Bayern Munich, but um, I was still like a good experience and probably the biggest success I had. Right, that's I've I've nowhere near that. Like yeah. I'm, not, I'm not up to that international thing. Like I've never beat that. But I think my proudest moment. And football's probably what we be man out um, the first game, home game, back. That's probably my proudest moment, to be honest. Yeah, getting uh, a call up for Scotland at under 16s. Um, thought that was one of like the big achievements I've actually had in my career so, career so far at that age. So I thought that was like pretty good for me. Yeah. What's the the toughest player you've played against? I've came across. I, I, Tough, tough defenders, obviously, being a striker, but honestly, see Gio uh, the place for us. She is, see when she came to your team, I was like, she's tough to play against when she played for, um, who did she play for before? Was it Glasgow Girls? Glasgow, Glasgow yeah. Girls. I can always remember her being like, uh, she's, she's a tough, tough cookie playing against, but see when she came and trained with us, and the, the team, I'm like, ah, she's, she's a lot tougher <laughs> than what I actually thought she was, but well, I, probably Gio, to be truthfully honest with you. Mine, it's quite different. I think Leanne Ross, maybe. So obviously we've been playing against friendlies and things like that. Like she's like obviously so much experience and things like that. And like try to get past her, it's, it's quite difficult to be honest. Like obviously she's getting international call ups and things like that when um she did. Um, but playing against them like friendlies and things like that, I thought she was quite difficult to actually get past. Cause, like she was on my side. Um, so when you try to get the ball, it's like. Either do you take it past her or like do you go back and things like that and start again? So it, it was quite hard because maybe try and get past Leanne Ross. I think um, she was quite one of the difficult players to actually get past. No, that's, that's a good option. Uh, what, about, what about you, Josie? So in Germany, like in cup games, usually end up playing again, or we usually ended up playing against team from the first division. So like I played against like Alex Pop or like Svenja Hood, like who actually play for the national team in Germany. So they're they're obviously really good, and it's just. I think, like, position-wise, it was when I just came into the first team and then we ended up playing to be in Potsdam and, like, just how the defenders played differently compared to what I was used to. Um, like, it showed me a lot. Like, it showed me, like, what areas I need to develop. Yep. Uh, what's the best team you've played against then? Uh, probably Wolfsburg. Like, we played them in a the cup yeah, and, okay. like, one or two times in a pre-season friendly as well. Did they not make the, the final or something of the Women's Champions League last year? Was it last year or the year before? Yeah, like yeah. they ended up in there a few times. Usually yeah. we went to see, uh, we had an, an SFA trip, so the Premier League, a lot of Premier League coaches went out to Germany. We went to see Wolfsburg in the quarter final of the Champions League three or four years ago and they were, they were properly class, like really, really good. Uh, I think, you know, it's good we've got kind of three attackers on, but I think in Scotland, I think kind of Leanne Ross, I would say, I would go with Chloe, I think. Although she started as an attacker, she's got older, she's gone further and further back in the team, but neither is a right back or a centre back. She's very, very, uh, I think she's probably one of one of the toughest any team that I've been coaching to come up against. Uh, I would go with her. I would say City. I would say City as well. 100%. It's got, cool. to be, it's got to be City. They've probably got, got the most experience in the PL1 after ladies football and they have got a, they've got a really, really strong side. 
and every time we play them, it's 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 um, it's a tough tough challenge. So yeah, I'd, I'd go with City. Like my uh, prayer text actually walked on the roof every time I played them, honestly. <laughs> 15k. <laughs> we did, uh, I, think, I can't remember if Dion, I think this was maybe just before Dion signed, but we played uh, played Habs in a midweek through Easter Road 2018, uh, right before they played Celtic in the League Cup final, and they were class. They uh, still had Shannon McGregor, Jamie Lee APR, Lizzie Arnott, uh, yeah. Joel. Uh, Joel Murray and Siobhan when they were the two of them were at their best. Uh, I think Abby can't remember if Abby played. I think Abby Harris yeah, played. Yeah. You know, the she will have played. Like they were properly good. I always go between them and the City team that battered us twelve nothing when I first came to Yankees. They're the two best. Uh, but yeah. that side at Easter Road, were, Aye, right, and we were one nothing up for thirty eight minutes. I don't know how, but we just couldn't hang on at half time. Uh, but they were really really good. Uh, very, very good. Yep. Uh, what about your most embarrassing moment? Uh, we'll include you in this one, Bobby, as well, because your 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 most embarrassing moment is a good one. Oh, I've got loads of embarrassing. Well, probably recently having to jump in goals at five sides. We played oh. five sides over the sort of winter winter shutdown. We did like Secret Santa Day, and I uh, it's a bad day when Chloe goes in goals and she's better than you. Probably. I missed an open goal once. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was actually it was actually really embarrassing because we like we were two one up and it was like last minute of the game and the other team had a free kick so they sent the goalie up but for some reason I didn't realize so then we we defended the free kick and I was running towards the empty goal but I didn't realize the goal was empty <laughs> and everyone started screaming so I just shot the shot from like from like twenty yards and missed and I was like just take me off now <laughs> <laughs> on the road. I have had that experience before, to be just really honest. I think I'm the same. Uh, when I was playing the Rangers, I think it was like two each within like the 90th minute, and the ball came to me, and I tried to sh- shoot. I was like, just me the goal. I was on the line, and somehow I put it wide. <laughs> like just me in the middle of the goal. Somehow I put it wide. I was, I was uh, actually like the whistle blew like two minutes after. I was actually lying on the floor like, how did that? How did I miss that? Oh, that was so embarrassing. That's actually it's embarrassing for me was that, that old Kilmarnock um, interview. I can't even watch it. I'm never going to watch it again. <laughs> that's why, uh, that's what we're, you remember, Ben, after the Queen's Park game. Oh, oh Jesus Christ, like, man. Where's, I've like sent Kirsty Mack up for an interview. And I, I said, no, I don't like, need that. Who's, 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 <laughs> who's like Dion? Who's like oh. Dion up there can interview? I mean, after that game, the adrenaline was high. That I, you're lucky I could even string two sentences together. And I don't even, I was there after it. I'm like, oh my goodness, you why and, is that uh, even? You and Ando just oh, are It's Ando's facial expressions. See, if you actually look at the video and just watch Ando's facial expressions, she's like, oh my God. This is it when he zooms up in her face. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Ando's facial she's like, I'm not doing this again. Don't do this again, with Dion, ever again. I remember that Queen's Park one, actually, because I think you and K-Mac came up, and K-Mac was like, I was like, why are you here, K-Mac? I don't need you. <laughs> I was like, and no, like, you're, you're staying here, came back. I, I was trying to like, send her away, and she's like, these questions? Aye. Away, so well, I'm glad she stayed. If you didn't stay, I don't think we'd get 30 seconds at you. No, you probably not. Like, that's great. <laughs> 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 what annoys you most about football? And if you could change one thing, what would you change? Uh, the last girls were complaining about the four o'clock kickoffs. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if that annoys you or not. It's just the waiting. I think that annoys me. Like you go up so early, prepare yourself to get food and things like that, but then after you've had your food, you're just sitting there going, like, can I leave now? Like it's like one o'clock, but like you don't need to leave till like an hour, hour and a half or something like that. And it's, like, it's just the waiting. It's for the four o'clock kickoffs. I wouldn't mind a two, but probably, yeah, the four o'clock kickoff is quite a tiny bit pain up and pain to you need to wait about basically <laughs> it's great when it's like two o'clock because you actually get time to come in and get your dinner and get your jammies on and you sit down for six it's great are they early kickoffs anyway no no a 10 kickoff but i remember the last time i had a 10 kickoff i think i was still oh, sleeping playing <laughs> i think i was still sleeping playing no got a lie <laughs> i think that the, the, the most annoying thing about football there is the the no getting them to be able to get changed before it, Cause especially in this Scottish weather. Aye. Like, my goodness, uh, honestly. Darwin. I think oh. I actually went home, like, I didn't even think, oh, bring a change of clothes. I think I went home at, at the Stirling game, just still soaking wet, mm-hmm. sitting in Dion's car. Like, yeah. I couldn't even move. Who's the most loudest and, like, the most kind of hyper teammate? Um, I think Ellie Kanga, if you know. Ellie. Me, it's Ellie. 100% Ellie. 
She's full of beans, isn't she? Like, she's, uh, a, she's, she's a good one. <laughs> this is stuff she comes out with. It's so random, but it's true. Hold on, Dio. Dio as well. Dio. 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 It's, just the, it's just the things that she does, like the stupid noises. You're just like betraying that you Dio in the distance just make me stupid noises. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to repeat the noise. No. You can't do it, but I do. Yeah. The last question I've got here is what are your plans for, for after football? Obviously, Josie, you want to complete your PhD in... Well, uh, currently, I, I wasn't sure about going to uni, uh, but till yesterday, so I've just started... Um, <laughs> till yesterday, so I'm still <laughs> filling it. <laughs> I'm still filling up my application, so I've like, applied for like sports coaching and things like that, so hopefully I can finish my application, get into that, and maybe get a, just get through the years, things like that, maybe get a, up to honestly green things up for it so it's manager there Ben yeah. what about you dear just continue with the photography stuff like that I probably just I've actually I'm actually in the process of applying for fire the fire services so we'll see how that goes but here's hoping next day uh, next year we're in PL1 and maybe we get a bit of funds put into the uh, the 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 team anyway and we start getting paid full time but mm. fingers crossed you never know if we win that league I'm I get I'm putting on the Euro Millions every Friday, Dion, so I'll, oh, I'll sort it out. I'll sort one it out day, one day. How nice is that? I'll start doing it too then, right? I'll, 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 employ, uh, I'll employ us all, it's fine. <laughs> Dion, see if we win the league, I'll buy you a bottle of antifreeze for your more, right? So you don't need to keep oh. going up with water. <laughs> 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 so we, we the, my mum, my dad gave me one the other day there, so I'm all sort of, uh, Chloe, we can look at the window when we're going to training. Sorry, no, no, a five minute message. Chloe, can you bring me up some water? I've got I've got any <laughs> water in my scooters. <laughs> I'm like, all after, right, Dion. After four weeks, you know, having water in my scooters. <laughs> Chloe, Dion and Josie and Bobby, thanks very much for coming on today and we'll see you next time in episode three. Cheers, Ben. Cheers, yeah, guys. Thank you. See you soon. Take care.